This joy that invades our hearts and our souls on this blessed occasion, this is he's talking on the occasion of a molid, is a sign of our love for the Prophet Muhammad. This is a celebration of every instant. It's not a fleeting celebration, the mere repetition of the popular tradition or social ceremony. This celebration, this durable and continuous joy, which is the meaning of Eid, returning joy, are linked to the great and noble place that our Prophet وسلم, deserves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala graced him with his proximity. Allah qualified him as mercy for all humanity. Allah attributed his, to him to be his beloved with such an incomparable dignity and eminent degree of which only the Creator could know the reality along with those that Allah has chosen and drawn near to him amongst all of the pure, amongst all of the knowledgeable, amongst all of the Gnostics, amongst all of the realized beings, those worthy of his love, of his proximity, of his presence, those who have filled the eyes of their hearts with the Mohammedan lights and who are extinguished in his love coming from their ardent desire. Mahabba is a precious goal. Mahabba is a noble station that can only the most sincere among the chosen servants of Allah can attain. In hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Nobody has experienced Iman until he loves me more than he loves his children. He loves me more than he loves his parents. He loves me more than he loves anybody else. This love for the Prophet and his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, held for him, finds its continuity in tasawwuf, which is the school for the love, school for the love of Allah, school for the love of His Messenger. And we can find many examples of this love in books, and poems, and the Qasaid, which stem directly from this station of Mahabha, this light that pure and healthy hearts have transmitted, alhamdulillah, from generation to generation. It heals the illnesses of the heart and revives them. This Mohammedan light pulls the soul out of unconsciousness and teaches it to love. The spiritual education of the heart, which is the, which is the basis of the school of Sufism, is the teaching of the love for Allah and for His Messenger and the submission to His guidance and His inspiration and His noble characters. The love of the Prophet وسلم, is one of the prime obligations of our deen, of our way of life. Because our faith is not complete without love of the Prophet It is to love that which perfects the respect of the Sunnah in the, or the prophetic example and engenders the love of all of those who love the Prophet. That's why we're all gathered together, alhamdulillah, his descendants and his companions. And for this Allah has ordered them what we said before, Kul, in kuntum tuhibun Allah fa ittabi'uni yuhibukum Allah that if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you. This is a promise. If you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your dhumb, your sins, your mistakes, for Allah is forgiving and merciful. Whoever obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. And in the same context, he says, if you love Allah, obey me. So the circle comes around. Love of Allah, love of the Rasul. Love of the Rasul, love of Allah. Obedience to Allah, obedience to the Rasul. Obedience to the Rasul, <laughs> obedience to Allah. All of these things are, are interconnected. We cannot, we're not here to speak of anything else, but that is where we must begin from. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala nuri mubin abdika wa habibika Sayyidina Muhammad al-Amin wa ala alihi wa asabihi haqiqina wa hubbihi akrima wa purbihi wa ja'ana min rafa'ak ila rabbil alameen. O Allah, send your prayers and your peace and your blessings upon the clear light, your slave, your beloved, our master Muhammad, the trustworthy, on his family, on his companions. Make us true to his love. Honor us with nearness to him. Include us to be among his comrades, O Lord of the world. He says, Ana Habibullah wa la fakra. I am the beloved of Allah, and I don't say it by any way of pride. As he mentioned in the early in the next ayah, the station is open to all. In kuntum to hibun Allah fa etabi'uni you hibukum Allahu. If you love Allah, follow me, Allah will love you. I have here and I can't read it in Urdu, but it's a poem, a short thing in, in thing. It says Love has curtains. They cannot be penetrated by the outsiders. <coughs> Only those behind the curtains know the secret talk of love. Oh. So all these people talking about it, 
They're talking about the singing the songs on the radios and all this thing. But all they're talking about is this. And if they're not talking about this, they're not talking about it. They're talking about something else. They're talking about another form of a, 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 what you call it, an inversion of love. What is all these love songs and all of this stuff is an inversion of love. If you don't hear Allah and you don't hear Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't hear those words, when talking about love, you don't hear those words, it's an inversion of love. It's not the true love. It's shaitanic. That's the truth. If you don't begin from there, if you don't look for mates from there, if you don't look for relationships from there, if Allah and Muhammad are not at the center of the relationship that you're forming, you have no relationship. You have no real relationship. You have an inversion of a relationship. You have a shaitanic relationship. And that's why we see the way, we see what's going on. We see this murder. We see this corruption. We see these traitors. We see all these things that are going on. What are they? They're the inversion of love. They're the inversion of truth. They're the inversion of justice. They're in the inversion of all the things that are true turned on their head and raised up above us and we're supposed to worship it. That's what they hold for us. And their children, when we send them to the school, that's what they give them. That's what they teach on the television. That's what they teach on the radio. That's what they teach in the magazines. That's what they teach in the newspapers. That's what they teach in their governments. That's what they teach everywhere. The inversion of love. Because you don't hear Allah, and you don't hear Muhammad, you don't hear that. You don't hear that, they're not talking about it, they're talking about something else. If they don't base what they're telling you on on that basis, who is it? He's Habib Allah. Who else is Habib Allah? Who else has Allah says, I love you, you are for me. You'll see later, I tell you, you'll see later, when he goes on the night journey, and this is what he said, you did this for them, you did that for them. He says, yes, but I have made you my beloved. I have made you my beloved. So if you don't hear that, if that doesn't come up in the discussion about love, if that doesn't come up in the songs, if it doesn't come up, if it isn't understood, it's the inversion, it's shaitan. This is a big secret. This is a big secret. Do you have to know the secret in understanding all relationships with all people that are formulated on this basis of what is called love? If that isn't at the basis of it, it's not a real relationship. Because it ignores, it hides its kafir of the truth. It covers up the truth. Because how could it be a real relationship? How could it be a real relationship? Only the people who, the, 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 you know, these, it says that love has curtains that cannot be penetrated by the outsiders. And he says, Alam sadrak. Have we not opened your heart? Allah will soon give you favors and you will be satisfied. And Allah is closer to the believers than to them to the they are to themselves. The Prophet. So now we're beginning to get close to the essence of what I'm trying to talk about in this thing. When I say in the thing, if you love Allah, follow me, Allah will love you. We point to a secret. A secret which is open, but nonetheless secret, which is the secret of how to arrive to the state and station of love. And in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah says, مَا وَسِيَانِي سَمَائِي وَلَأَرْدِي مَا وَسِيَانِي سَمَائِي وَلَأَرْدِي وَلَكِنْ وَسِيَانِي قَلْبِي عَبْدِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ My earth could not contain me, nor my heavens. It's actually my heavens could not contain me, but nor my earth. But my heart, that the heart of my believing servant contained me. Now, Ibrahim was talking earlier, and he says this, uh, Sayuti or Tustri said that this was only reserved for the Prophet ﷺ, but I said no, I disagreed with Tustari even though he's a great a great scholar and everything because this, what he's talking to the Prophet ﷺ, we are the shadows of the Prophet ﷺ. We are not of course the Prophet ﷺ. We're the shadows. Of the what he promises to him, he promises to us. This is very important to understand. That's why he said to Salman, Antamin al bayt That's why he said to Bilal, Antamin al bayt Because so that people couldn't say, no, I'm, I, I, I am, I am uh, 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 Sayyid. Only the people who have blood in their veins from, from the Rasulullah are Sayyid. No, no. 
Obviously, Salman is from the Al Bayt. Yeah. Obviously, Bilal is from. And there was even one. The name of the man, the Jew. I forget his name. He said, "Who used to be a Jew became a Muslim." Who am in Al Bayt? So this is where the people can't say the Sayyids. May Allah bless them and protect them all. They can't say only we are Sayyids. No, no. This is an important thing to understand. Allah bless. Allah's blessing is wide, wasya. And so when he says, nothing in the earth can contain me, nothing in the heavens, but the heart of my believing servant, it's possible for you and me to be believing servants of Allah. This, I fervently believe this, despite what the story says, that this is only reserved for the Prophet, and the, only, the only pure heart, yes, the only pure heart is the heart, heart of Muhammad None of us will ever purify our hearts to that degree. This is for sure. But we can work towards that. And to the degree, you know, there was this man, he lived in the middle of the desert. And Musa alayhi salam, one time he was walking through the desert as he used to do. And he came upon this man. And you know when you meet somebody in the desert, you know, you don't see many people in the desert. So the guy tells him, he says, oh, come and visit me in my house. Please, please come and visit me in my house. So he take him to the house. And it's a very kind of run down house out in the middle of the desert. And he takes him inside and there's this beautiful room inside the house. And he says, this is Allah's room. Please come and sit down and I, let me feed you. Now I know this, I lived in a village in, in Upper Egypt at one time. And they invited my wife and myself to come and eat. And they fed us what they themselves might eat once every six months. In a very special room inside of the house. It was beautiful. The house was run down, but this room was absolutely clean, it was painted, it was it had beautiful, what they thought of beautiful things on the wall, everything like that. Because this, this is the house for the guest, that they keep just for that. They never sit in it themselves. It just, they want to bring the guest to give them the best. He tell them, this is the room of Allah. Musa tell them, what do you mean the room of Allah? Allah doesn't have any room. What do you think? Allah, Allah, is, you, you think you can put Allah in some room? <laughs> and he dud on him. <laughs> Next day, Musa alayhi salam is walking in the desert and Allah duds on him. <laughs> he says, what do you tell him like that? He says, Allah, what do you mean why I told him like that? You, you, you know, what could contain you? He says, he said, this, this is his belief, this is what he loved. He, 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 he wanted you to, to partake of it. He wanted to give you of that love, and you refused him. Mm -hmm. Well, who are you, Musa? See, so that's the thing. Understand that. Understand that. So there, yes, we will never reach to the point of having clean hearts like the Rasulullah. So, so, no, there's no way. He is Rasulullah. He is Habibullah. He is Khayr Khalqullah. He is the best of Allah's creation. We cannot hope, but oh, we can hope to emulate him and to clean our hearts so that maybe some portion of the light of Allah might be in our own hearts. This is our wish. This is what we're working for. So that this light might exist inside of us and illuminate us with its light and its glory, inshallah. So to, to close the door, though I respect Tustari and what he says, but you can't close the door on that. You have to hold this as an ideal because people have to have a goal to work for, something to work for, so that something to aspire to, something that they, that they might reach to, that they might clean themselves, that they might purify themselves, that we might all do that so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might find a place inside of us. He says himself, He is with you wherever you are. Hopefully he will be in our hearts, inshallah. This is our wish. That means nothing contains my glory, nothing contains my lights, nothing contains my manifestations except the heart of the believer. The hearts of the believer contain me. Allah is saying, you cannot have any other thing where I am contained. You cannot have two things in your heart, only one. Allah says in another hadith Qudsi, Qal bal mu'min bayt rabb. The heart of the believer is the house of, of the Lord. This is very important a point to understand if you want to understand the different dimensions of the love, inshallah.